Hey, it's CrossFitTracking.com. I'm just going to show everybody how to make a dedicated uh, CrossFit workout um, option within the reoccurring workout settings. So if you go into any of the primary workout choices, I tend to choose one that's already pre-existing. Um, so there's the CrossFit one that I've made that is basically the cardio. That's a little picture of the cardio that's just been converted to have a CrossFit name to it that I've edited the data fields the way I like it. Um, you want to choose one of the workout options that doesn't have GPS on. Um, you can turn GPS on within any of these workouts. Um, you can control those settings within the settings menu. But for now, we'll just choose one that um, we know doesn't have GPS on because that's not primarily something that you need. So typically I'll change um, always push up when you're in the workout itself. You push the up button for the um, different options. And then this goes into the basic settings. I always adjust the data screens. So here, whenever you're in a, one of these pages, you can edit what it, um, how it, the layout looks as well as the data field. So I'll go into layout and then I'll tend to go to where you can see four items of data across the screen. So you select that one, then you go into the data fields. When it's flashing, you can edit it. So the timer one is automatically here at the top and I usually keep that. So then once you wanna to go to a lower flashing one, you click down and you click into it. And I usually set heart rate here. And then you scroll down to go to the next data field. Slick into that. And I go average heart rate here and then go down to go to the bottom. And I usually like to see the time of day, which is one of the other fields, because I wanna know how much time is left in class. So there we have the primary data landing page for the workout timer, heart rate, average heart rate, and time of day is just what I use. And then you can go out of this and you can go into here. You can add this heart rate gauge by doing a single data layout and then finding the heart rate gauge listed in the heart rate fields um, drop down. So I like to have that in case you just want to keep a constant monitoring as well as it'll show you um, the zone that you're in at any point in the workout. Um, so once we have that set, you go back in, you can see that all those preset items are there. You always hit up to adjust the options. So you can go into the primary settings and then you go down. You can see obviously you can adjust a lot of different aspects to it. Um, but here's the rename. So um, you go into the rename and you go up to do the backwards. And here you would type in CrossFit. So I already have a CrossFit one, so we'll just call this um, CRSFT for an abbreviated version. And then you got to go all the way back. You don't want to hit the back button here because it won't save unless you hit the check mark. So now you're back in the data screens and you go back and you have CrossFit listed and so when you go back into your list of workouts the CrossFit one you just made is there. One thing to note when you're doing a workout one thing that you might want to have an awareness of is your time for each round and what you do is so when you start the workout it just times it shows your heart rate and average heart rate and that goes on and on. But let's say you get through the warm up and you go to start, um, you know, as many rounds as possible type of workout or rounds for time. And you want to know how much time you spent in each round to get your average, um, you know, pace. So when you're in the middle of workout, you always hit the bottom right button and it'll save a round time. So that goes from, you know, zero to one. The first round was the first 26 seconds. Um, and then it'll go back to the main screen. So you finish the next round, click it here. So what I always do is when I am 
through the warm up and you're going into a rounds for time, for example, as I hit the button once to start the whole workout, if the Metcon includes rounds for time, and then each subsequent round is actually the time of the first round. So um, when you go into your Garmin Connect, you can see each of the rounds. The first round that's gonna be labeled is obviously just the total length of time for the warm up, and then it begins to track your actual rounds, uh, your time per round. So it's just a good metric to be able to calculate, you know, if you were lagging significantly in the middle rounds or on the end rounds, obviously, or just to see how much you fell off of a certain pace from one round to the next. Um, just if, especially if you're doing, you know, intervals of 500 meter rows or something like that, you can track your actual time per, um, per interval this way. So then obviously you stop that and you would go in and it would give you an option to save it. Obviously, we're just gonna discard that, but that's how you set up a basic CrossFit workout so that it's automatically an activity type when you go into your list and you have the data fields the way you want them. Um, at any point, if you don't like the settings that you've created, you can hit up and go into the CrossFit settings and go down to the bottom and hit uh, restore defaults and it will take you back to the defaults of all the things only thing that's not defaulted is the name so the name still gets stuck on the whatever you named it but the original elliptical settings um, as far as data fields and um, things that it was tracking is going to be reset as well so um, CrossFitTracking.com. Thanks so much.